Hi guys, Neil here with Facelift Interiors. Welcome back to our channel. So this video is part two to a video that we posted previously on a bed frame. This is part two, how to build, upholster, your headboard from scratch. So again, this video is sponsored by Linwood Fabrics. The fabric we are using is from the Amiga range. It is a brand new range out made from recycled yarns. It is stain resistant and is just a beautiful fabric to work with. So Linwood offer a great range of fabrics from prints to this beautiful Amiga velvet that we're using today. So if you wanna have a look at their website, I will leave the link to the website in the description below. As always, if you like upholstery tips and tricks, don't forget to subscribe to this channel hit the notification bell so you'll see when new videos are available. Also, don't forget to follow us over on Instagram, TikTok, and all the things the young guys are doing now. We are very down with this stuff. So without further ado, this is how to make and upholster a headboard from scratch. Action. So this is our headboard. You see, I've, I've cut it to size. So it's 105 across the top. See, that's the top here, and then it's 94 centimeters deep, I think. You can see here that I've drawn a line of eight centimeters. So what that basically means is, I'll show you on this skirting board, but it doesn't equate to this skirting board. So when we put the frame on, it will start from there. This isn't the skirting board that we, that's obviously in the room. So it's a lot lower, so it starts here, and then the frame will start from there and run around. So that's the headboard frame. With that, we have got some, we've got some 2B1 batten here. This is just a 2B1 smooth timber that we're gonna to use to cut up and make the frame of the headboard. So it's gonna be like a canvas, like you get on a, uh, on a painting. Exactly like this one, actually. Let me show you this. So that is a canvas picture. So that's essentially what you're gonna be doing, but that front is gonna be the sterling board. We don't need a middle brace because it's solid wood. But that's kind of essentially what we're doing. We've also got these little thin strips of wood. Uh, these are really handy for upholstery you can use them on headboards you can do them on bed frames you could even use them on sofas as well if you're using if you want like a, a dome top or a domed front instead of like cutting a bit of wood out to, to follow up to you could pin this on glue it and pin it on and then you've got a hard edge to upholster up to so you can upholster up to this edge here why does it keep focusing on my face huh so you can upholster up to that and then you've got a hard line to follow which is great now we're going to do, we're just going to frame up our headboard like a, um, like a painting canvas. So you can see here down the bottom, drawn a line across. That is where, that's the height of the skirting board. The batten's going to go across there, up there and across there. So all I'm going to do now is measure. It's 105. So I've got these battens here. 105. So I'm just gonna go and cut those. So now we're just gonna glue and pin this frame up for the headboard. So I'm just gonna mark this side again so I know where to follow when I glue it and screw it on the other side. So we use wood glue and pin all four sides So now we're just gonna go around putting some screws in just to make it very much nice. So here we're screwing down on our line that we drew when we marked the battens, just so we know that we're screwing directly into the batten. And then we screw all the way around, but we're only gonna show you a couple. So as you can see behind me here, here's the headboard. So. What I've done is I've pushed the headboard up because this is how it's going to sit. So it's a four sided bed frame and then a headboard that is bolted to the wall. The legs aren't on this frame at the minute. So once the legs are on, the headboard's going to come up to this line here. So that line is where this is going to finish on that line. Yeah, we're going to do like a plain panel, then a nice board around the edge. Um, underneath here is going to be just like a bit of padding. There's not going to be a lot there because you don't really see it and no one really touches it. So we're gonna do a nice bolstered sort of padded section in there, same around the edges. So that is how we're gonna do it. So if you wanna come with me into the workshop, um, I'll show you what we're gonna do in the middle and um, the reason we've done this battening as well. So, all right. Right, so as you can see, this is our this is our headboard frame. So these are the battens that I've cut. I've cut these at a 45 here. So what I've done here is I've essentially allowed a four inch 
and four inch, so that is a four inch border that runs around. We cut these little strips of wood. I've just pinned them on for now, like temporary. So that is our four panels. So now, so what we're going to do now, we're going to pin these on. We're going to glue them and pin them. And because they're only thin, as you can see, that is a very thin strip of wood. So it's only about three mil thick. We can pin that on just using our staple gun. So we're going to use glue and pins, probably 14, 14 mil pins. So we go all the way through that and into the, uh, the board underneath because that's about three mil. And I know that the board is about 12 mil. So, um, so let's get some glue and some pins and pin these on. And then we can start building it out. You can apply this to any sort of headboard that you're doing. So this really thin wood strip is really good. You can cut it to size, make it the size that you want it. And it gives you a nice hard edge to finish on, to work up to, shall we say? Because sometimes when you're doing this, if you're doing it free handed and you've got no edge, you kind of got to make sure you've got to keep looking on the line, make sure you're finishing on the line. Whereas if you've got a hard edge like this, it makes it a lot easier to finish because you can just follow that line. Here I haven't put any, but I know I can just follow that straight. So now I'm just gonna show you what I'm gonna do to build this headboard frame. Right, so on this headboard, we want a nice little dome in the middle. So this is essentially kind of like we do with dining pads or seats that we put a domer in first. So this is gonna make it a nice big dome, nice luxurious. So I'm finishing about an inch away on each side. So we're just gonna glue that down. Gonna do the same over here. You can use your old scraps for this. You can build it out of a load of old scrap underneath. And now we're gonna go on top of our domer. Not our domer, sorry, our foam. That's what's wrong with me. So, like we did with the frame of the bed, we can glue this down. So now what we can do is on that edge, roll up our foam down and staple on the top of that edge so I'm just going to glue this end as well so you can see that I'm finishing on top then I'm going to use a thick dacron that goes over that gets rid of all these tack ties because you don't want to be seeing that on the fabric. So the thick Dacron is going to come over the top and finish on the edge. So when you staple on, you won't see any of these ripples. So this is, I should have said, guys, this is a two inch, like medium soft foam. You don't have to use hard white on a headboard. No, sorry, hard blue. This is plenty fine. Plenty fine. So we've just got this last edge to finish. So now we need to add the Dacron. So now we're gonna glue the Dacron on, pulling down. And then we're gonna go to the other side and pull it so there's no ripples. Now, if you want to, I'm just gonna put a few staples So I know where to cut off and cut away all of our excess Dacron we don't need. Right, so now we just need to go and get our fabric and then we can start upholstering this. So we have our fabric. First of all, I'm gonna put a staple in the bottom. I can feel my ridge and like we done, I'll put another one in there. Like we done with the, uh, the other panels, I'm gonna pull I'm gonna pull nice and tight this way, making sure we have the same amount of fabric away from the board. So we're gonna come this way as well. And see here, this is even. So I'm making sure that I've got the same amount of fabric up this way. So 
So now what I'm going to do is pull this fabric nice and tight over this way. So we just put a couple of staples kind of in the middle. So now we're going to pull it nice and tight. So what I'm doing guys is I'm kind of working this way and then upwards as well. And I'm dropping my gun off the ridge. You'll hear it, you'll, sit, you'll feel it drop off the ridge and then I'm stapling down. I'm going to pull the middle out as well. And put a staple in the end or a couple to just hold that in place. I'm, I'm looking down as well, looking down, making sure it's not lumpy and bumpy. So now we're just finishing off the stapling up to the corner. Now I'm just using a Stanley knife to cut off the excess fabric. Now I've got my piping cord and I'm just running it all the way around the edge up to the wood up to the wooden line. You'll feel that as you push your piping cord up to it. So you can't really go over that. And this is a good trick for getting around the corner. Just cut put a couple of little nips in the piping cord will make it much easier to get it around the corner. Right, ladies and gentlemen. Right, so what we are doing now is, this is the corner, guys. I'm working out um, how I'm gonna cut this fabric, because obviously there's gonna be a big bit of padding on there. So, obviously these bits can be cut straight. So, um, what I'm gonna do is measure this corner to that corner over there. Do it quite tight, because obviously I pull the fabric quite tight. And then I wanna have a mitre here. So, that is gonna run like so. So there's gonna be a join here, but obviously there's gonna be a lot of fabric. So I might cut a slight bow either side, adding on a little bit of fabric to allow for the bulge. So here as well is where we are gonna to need to add at least half an inch. If I just add my half an inch on there, hopefully you can sort of see where I am. So that is adding on half an inch, but here, what I will do this side is flare that way, and this side I'll flare that way. So we're not governed, we're meaning governed, meaning when fabric's tight and you're stapling it in and if you haven't got enough excess fabric, you're gonna be in trouble because you're gonna be really tight with your, with, your, with your stitch line. So we flare it out to make sure it's not too tight. So when you sew it up, you've got a spare bit of fabric that's not keeping you tight in there. Here I'm gonna cut long. Around this side, I'm going to cut long as well. I'm not going to. I'm not going to be cutting on that line because the fabric's going to come around and staple off down here. Then I'll do a separate border and a bit of piping around the edge. So yeah, that's basically it. So we're going to take that away now and cut that. I'll show you how I do that with the fabric. So we'll use that and cut our fabric around it. Here's our fabric. So I'm going to cut plenty extra around here and. Plenty extra around there, but I'm just going to cut it straight. So here is where our mitre is. Now, when I say flare it off, I mean like this. So that is our half inch allowance. All right, so I've cut that flare off now. So um, let me show you what I mean. So here I'm going to come in at an angle and I'm adding half, a, half an inch on from my stitch. And here is our flare. So what I'm going to do is flare that round like so. So I'm not governed by any sort of material and I'm also going to mark there. So I know that that is where I need to, that is where I need to staple but this is all excess material. So that is where my back tack needs to finish on that line. So now what I wanna do on the back of the fabric, right, so I'm drawing my line along here so I can follow that. So that's my stick, that is my back tack in line. So what I'm gonna do now guys is measure from this corner to this corner is 33 and a half inches. 
So from there to there needs to be 34 and a half inches. So I'm just going to lay this down the top next to the sides. So this is the side panel. So I'm going to cut straight up to there, half inch allowance. There, on that line, is where my back tack is going. Now this one, I'm also going to flare around this way, like so. So, so that, them two are going to stitch together like so. And see here, we've got loads of excess fabric, so we're not going to need all of that, so we'll cut some of that off. So what we're doing here is lining our corner up, making sure we're in exactly the right place. Always check and be very careful when doing this because if your corner doesn't line up, it's not going to look great. So always check. Now we're going on with our cardboard strip and that's going to go all the way around. But here I'm just going to go one side, cut it off, then go and do the other side. Then we put a little bit over the corner as well, just to make sure you've got a nice clean line when you pull down. Right, just a very quick one, ladies and gentlemen, because obviously we lost, we lost our ability to film then. So hopefully you can see right into this corner. See here, we've gone up to this side, up to this side, and then we've cut across with a bit of back tack as well just so we get that nice clean corner edge. And obviously we've gone with back tack down the sides as well. Um, these are little blue strips of foam just to add padding, just to add a bit of dome in to the headboard. So now I'm putting on my two inch foam. So what I'm doing is I'm working down from the kind of the middle. So what we're doing now is we are stapling our foam down. Obviously we've got the little blue bit of foam giving it the dome. And like we've done on the bottom of the headboard, we're just stapling the foam down, being very careful not to staple over the fabric. Here we're putting a mitre in the foam in the corner, just so we can glue them together and we get a nice clean fix in. And we're gonna staple all the way down the sides as well. Now we're gonna also staple down the top of the foam on the top of the headboard. Then we're going to add Dacron. Again, when you're putting Dacron on, make sure it's not rippling, make sure you pull it tight. And now we're pulling the fabric over onto the top of the headboard and stapling off, making sure we try and get rid of all the tack ties so there's no pulls, there's no bumpiness make sure it's nice and clean. Alrighty guys, so we are nearing the end. So as you can see, I've just laid it down here. So this is the top, as you can see there, that's the, the middle panel. That's the border, all on. So what I've done is I've got a bit of chalk and I'll just run it around on the top. You can probably see that white, faint white line. So that is the wood, that is the beginning of the wood frame. So what I'm gonna do is just go around stapling this bit of pipe in. So I've got a bit of pipe in that I'm gonna put another board around it just to sort of finish it off, give it a nice clean finish. So yeah, I'll put that corner on. I like to run my fingers along the pipe in like this. Sometimes straightens it out. So hopefully you can see here, there's the white line. So I'm just following along that. So I've got the edge of the pipe in hitting the white line. That's the top on. So now we're gonna do the sides. Hopefully you can see that too. There's my white line. So I'm just pulling the pipe in nice and tight, flattening it out. So, our border, we've done two joins. So these joins are gonna line up with the joins on the headboard. 
So let's get that the right way round. So I'm just going to put bang that corner on. So now I'm going to pull it to the other side, make sure the join matches over here as well. So now we're attaching the border to the top of the headboard, stapling all the way along, making sure the seams line up on the corners. Now we're going on with our back tack, obviously stapling very close to the edge as always. So guys, on the top here, I've got this quarter inch foam. I'm just running round. Stapling all the way up to the edge. So it's just gonna give us a nice padded feel at the top in case someone runs their hands over it because you will feel you will feel the um, the gap here and all the staples so so you can put Dacron on if you want is another option I quite like this stuff it's really good for these kind of back tack jobs Gives you not too much like a half inch border, like a half inch bit of foam. It's a bit better, it's not as thick. So now we're pulling the fabric over. It's obviously going to be quite tight. Pulling the fabric nice and tight. Now we're doing the seam on the corner. Pulling it really nice and tight. Then we're going to cut away all of our excess material. So you get a nice clean finish on the corner and it's not too heavy. Now we're just going to work our way along, finishing off the border along the top and down the sides. And here she is in all her glory. Isn't she beautiful? Thanks for watching guys, see you next time.